in this meeting. I'm just starting uh, recording right now. So thank you again for coming. Um, I've already done the introduction, so we'll just get started. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share with you, um, I'm just going to share my screen, and what's going to happen is we're going to then just show some of the various websites and pieces and items that we decided to uh, make available to you for you. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to cover up a lot of your land space for the moment here, and then I'm going to be sharing my screen. So if you would... Just hang on for a moment here. Okay, you should be able to right now see my screen, and I'll spread it out. And I wanted to start with, I wanted to start with uh, our ESU8 homepage. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is there's a lot of great information that you can get from a couple things that we purchase for our schools. And one of those is World Book Web, which is on the uh, right hand side and by clicking on that then you can immediately search within World Book Web for Olympics and I'm going to go out to that first right away but also within SNAP SNAP is our federated search and you can get on to Learn360 and also search Olympics and find many items that you can use within your classroom so I wanted to start by reminding our ESU schools that we do purchase those things for you um, so let's start by looking at um, the World Book Web, and what I did when I logged in, <clears throat> excuse me, all right, actually I've closed that, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it with you, I'm going to go to World Book Web, and then I'm going to go to Advanced, now notice all of these windows here, all these choices, each, each choice will get you something different depending on what it is that you're looking at, but what I wanted to look at today was the advanced section and I'm going to click on advanced and then I'm just going to search for Olympics. Hey Corey while you're doing that yeah. I noticed in the chat that people were having um, problems accessing that doc so just to let you guys know we're aware of that and we'll get that fixed here before we we get done today or at least we'll get you a new link of that document um, so that you can access it. Okay right right if it's uh, if it's not working um, we will definitely fix that. Okay, so World Book uh, Advanced, which is I'll call about the higher, you know, if, if you're older students. Um, notice there are 324 items that are related to this. When I go down the left-hand side here, okay, there's, there's video, there's special reports and things like that, but I'm going to go to just the Olympic Games, for instance, in this case, and just see what, what it just, you know, a general overview um, of the Olympics. Now, there are many things you can do with this, of course. You can save your or print your article. You can save it if you have set up your own research section. You can also hear this text read aloud. Now, down the left-hand side here, you've got pictures of the flag, okay, various sites, right? Plenty here to look at and use, and this is all just from one search um, that you have available to you via the web. Some of these, you know, are obviously from the previous Olympics, but they'll be updating this as time goes. But enough information, if you're just wanting to start that discussion with your kids on the Winter Olympics or just the Olympics in general, I would start somewhere with, like, World Book Online. Okay? All right, next. Uh, Mickey, I believe, is going to talk about this site. This is Sochi2014.com. Mickey, I'll let yeah. you go. Yeah, this is a great site um, that gives you information pertaining to the Sochi Olympics. And this is probably uh, one of the sites that I would start off with, especially if you have older kids. Uh, back when I was in the classroom, uh, I remember I did a whole project around the Nagano uh, Olympics, which was in Nagano, Japan in 1998. And at that time, um, if, if those of you, if you were around at that time and you were in education, you know that the web was just pretty new back then. So there wasn't a whole lot of resources that were available, but the Olympic Committee, the Olympic site, did have a web resource that we could access. Now this looks a lot different than it did back in 1998, but one, one thing that I had my kids do was I had them plan a trip to the Olympics. And, you know, if you're talking about an international trip, then you're talking about a lot of money, and sometimes kids don't get that. And one of the things that you can do here on this website is you can actually purchase tickets for the different events. And um, that is, I think I found that under 
four spectators, Corey, is under four spectators. Four spectators. And you okay. can look at the ticket prices. And another thing that you can pull in here is because this is in Russia, you would actually be talking about uh, currency exchange rates. And so I think that's a good thing to, you know, you can bring some math into your classroom that way. And this, this site is just full of information. And as it as the uh, Olympics start, it will, you know, be updated continuously and you'll be able to see medal counts and results. And obviously you can see here um, when, when the events are taking place. Um, you know, you could talk about time zones because this is going to be in a completely different time zone than what we're used to. Um, and so this is just a great website to get started with some basic information. Um, and we've got some other sites that will go into more detail about each of the different events. But I, I like this website because you can take, have some uh, information about the culture of Russia. It talks about the mascots for the Olympics. So a lot of great stuff on this website. Very good. Very good. I've poked around this too. And like we said, there's so much to look at. We were just uh, wanted to give you just a taste of some of the things that we've come across. Okay, next. This is, if, if you're more of an elementary teacher, some of these ideas are, are pretty basic, but I found this on Scholastic. Um, it's called Winter Olympic Math. And down here, for instance, and some of these sometimes seem obvious, but the lesson plan idea I took out of this, depending on the grade level that you are at, you know, you can create this gold medal graph. And you obviously saw on the last site where they're going to do that for you. But, you know, you get the kids involved with this and you get them to make something that says as a class, you know, keep track of the number of gold medals the United States has won. Create that graph and chart paper, you know, and, and then it even says, you know, bring in recycled yogurt lids to, to represent the medals and do, just do things like that. It's great ideas to get kids involved. And then just, you know, when we get in a rut and we're doing the same lessons over and over, perhaps, hopefully you're not, but... When you have a large event like this that's worldwide, I love to bring this in and it re-engages students. Don't you think, Mickey? Did I lose Mickey? Yeah, absolutely. And, it's yeah. possible. And, uh, you know, oh, you you're still there? About, you talked about doing... Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, you talked about doing graphing activities. Wouldn't that be great to put up on a smart board? Huh? You know, you could do the graph and you could make it interactive. You know, there's all sorts of things you can do in Smart Notebook where you could um, have some little medals and have the kids drag them over under, you know, for if we're ta keeping track of the United States medals, we could have them build a gold medal and silver medal. And, and so that would be kind of fun and a little interactive, especially for those younger kids. Absolutely, because so many of us have either Promethean board or Smart board or whatever the case is or Mimeo in their rooms and you get them up out of their seats and you get them active and participating. This next site, NBC Learn, I thought this was a wonderful site because it's full of uh, appropriate videos um, that really get into, again, the science of Winter Olympics. Now, as I scroll through these, I'm going to play just a, a little bit of one, not a lot, um, but I wanted to point out that I am under the science of Olympic Winter Games, but also within this, I wanted you to notice the others. There's a science behind the news. There's a science between of uh, the Summer Olympics, science of golf, and so on. So it, it's much more than just the Olympics here, but also up at the top, there's a science and engineering of the 2014 Winter Olympic Games. So these are all about five-minute videos, and of course they're well done. So as, as I scroll through this, you've got everything from the aerial physics from the aerial skiing, okay, banking on speed with the bobsled. So I'm, I'm going. There's a mathletes one here. Uh, I'm going to show you just a just a brief few minutes of the science of skis, so you get an idea of the quality of these videos and, and that they're short. So I'm going to click on this. I don't know how well you'll be able to hear it, so I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Okay. In skiing events like the downhill, slalom, or ski jump, it's often the skis bound to athletes' feet and the materials used to make them that give these athletes an edge over the competition. This year's Olympians, along with researchers funded by the National Science Foundation, explain how the materials used to make their skis play a vital role in performance on the mountain. They barrel down the mountain, fly through the air, weave through gates, beating the competition by only hundreds of a second. 
athletes on skis, long slender runners that glide over the snow. Skis used to be made of simple wood slats, but today's skis are marvels of chemical and materials engineering. Over the past, say, 100 years, there's been a real evolution in the properties of skis. Okay, so they go on to talk about how the skis are made. And then what's great about this is if you look over on the right-hand side, hopefully you can see that, okay, there's a transcript of what it is they're saying. But also, when I close that transcript window, there's also an activity. So right here, you've got a lesson plan for you. It tells you what you need. It says what to do. And then you've got the video that goes with it. And then even questions. I mean, th this is great stuff. Kids are going to love doing this. So I would definitely recommend spending some time on NBC Learn. And once again, we'll make sure that that link works or that we get you the link um, for sure. NBC Learn, full of great, appropriate, wonderful videos. Okay, I'm going to jump over here to Twitter. And let me, um, let me pull that one up here. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because uh, I'm, I'm just going to create another tab here, is because Mickey is into Twitter. I am as well. But some of you who may be watching or listening may not be into Twitter. But what I wanted to make sure that you knew is that you don't have to belong to and use Twitter on a daily basis to be able to see what it is that uh, Twitter has to offer you. Mickey, do you want to just talk a little bit about what you might do or what you might see here in the Twitter stream? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Corey's pulled up the official Olympics account for Twitter, and you can tell it's the official account because it has that blue check mark next to the word Olympics there in their profile picture. Um, mm -hmm. And the, they have a great stream of pictures and comments, and Corey and I were looking at this earlier today, and the pictures are just amazing that they're sending out. So this is the official Olympic stream, and actually I, I've been on Twitter a little bit today, and um, it's kind of interesting if you have heard the news reports, um, the, uh, let, how shall I say this, the accommodations in yeah. Sochi are maybe not up to Western standards, and uh, so there, there's also a little bit of controversy. Um, and you may also have heard the controversy as far as are they going to be able, is Russia going to be able to keep our athletes safe? Now, you're probably not going to see too much of that on this particular stream, um, but that was coming through on my Twitter stream uh, just today was the fact that they were tweeting pictures of the poor conditions in the hotels and things like that. But this particular Twitter stream is the official Olympic uh, account, and you can see, like, Corey's scrolling through there. There's some awesome pictures on there. And like Corey and I were talking about, you could take any one of these pictures and do a great writing activity on that. You know, that, that picture with the, I don't know if they're scooping snow or something, but, right. you know, there's all sorts of um, interesting winter sports that we're not so familiar with. Um, but you could definitely have your kids do some kind of writing activity based on one of these pictures. Absolutely. And I guess what I wanted to take out of this is if, if you don't have a Twitter account, you just go to twitter.com slash Olympics and you're able to see this. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to create an account. You don't even have to be a Twitter user. Right, Mickey? Right. And that will give you some up to the, some really current up to the minute um, information if you're using Twitter to, to just kind of gather some information. Absolutely. Okay, so these next few sites, these are all under olympic.org. So I have several things I wanted to point out, but again, there's so much to look at. Here are a few of the things that I like about olympic.org. Of course, just like that other um, website that we looked at earlier, there's a nice little schedule on the home page. Okay, so just, just be aware of that. But as far as this goes, when you're talking about lesson plans and just talking about the Olympics, there's a great video under the video section. And I have this on, on our link again, so you don't have to go back and find this later. There's a beginning video. It's called A Beginner's Guide to the Olympics. And it's five minutes long. Again, I love the length of it because, you know, if it gets too long, maybe it's not as quite as entertaining or as good. And I won't play this for you right now, but this is something that I would start with, just talking about the Olympics as a whole. All found within Olympic.org. Okay? The next one, the next part of Olympic.org was the news and it's this tab over here that's highlighted it's called news I found myself going to this one a lot because it's keeping you updated with some of the latest news but also articles like this there are 12 winter sports 
that are new this year. Okay? And we'll have a quiz and we'll have you guess at them later as far as what that is, what the 12 winter sports are. But this is a great discussion. And then with each of them, they have videos. So here's one. It's Olympic. Um, this is a biathlon mixed relay, figure skating team event. There's the luge team relay. Okay? And these are only a couple minutes long. Great, uh, great place to start your day, talking about maybe one of the new events, watching a quick video of it, like you said, Mickey, write a journal entry about it, you name it. And then you combine that with the NBC Learn, and when you get some science activities in there, you've got plenty to do around the Olympics. Okay, this next. Oh, uh, there, there's my Twitter. Okay, this next one I wanted to show you, and, and again, this will be in our link. I wanted to make sure so you're not trying to write these things down, but I found this in a blog, but I really like this, um, this visual here. Okay, plenty of things to discuss here as far as um, the, the facts and numbers re, um, that are related to the Olympic torch relay. Okay, how many regions? So just bring this up. Another something to talk about. There's also a map here. No point, yes. Um, infographics are all the rage right now. You see them everywhere, and that's what you have an example of right there. Um, yep. It's just taking numbers and putting it into a picture so that it's easier to understand. You know, and so you could have, you know, pull this one up and have your kids look at it. And then you could have them make their own infographic on some particular topic. You know, they could do the research and they could find the numbers and then they could do their own infographic related to the uh, Olympics. And there are uh, lots of free websites that are that you can use to make an infographic. There's some iPad apps also available. So you could have your kids get into the technology that way, um, creating something. You bet. I love I love infographics. It's just it's just a fun way to look at this stuff. But to go along with the torch relay, um, also a link found within this blog here was was this map here, and I really thought this map was fun um, because it's interactive. I can make it larger here by and then as I click on Moscow, let's see down here at the bottom, then it pulls it up, and where I'm looking at right here is Moscow. So you can, again now you bring your social studies into it. You talk about where Moscow is, Moscow is, and then. When you click on number two, where it, where it goes next, okay, how many um, you could figure out the distance, and then I can also click on the name of of a city, and it takes me out to that city, and it gives me various information. So you could spend, you know, plenty of time talking about what is going on here with with this torch relay. You can look at the landscape, you can look at the terrain, you can talk about the climates, and so on. Um, all, all within this torch relay map. And, and what's better, again, than an interactive map? And you can see how far it's traveled. I just well, found this one. Yeah, Go and going off of that, Corey, you talked about calculating the distance. Well, you mm -hmm. know, those um, measurements are going to be in kilometers, and right. uh, we're used to miles here in the United States, so that would be a whole other thing that you could introduce, a whole other topic you could introduce to your class. Right. The whole conversion business absolutely okay next there's an edutopia website and what I thought was interesting regarding this um, edutopia website is we're talking about many of the stem resources but the reason why I won't spend too much time on this is a lot of these like right here the science and engineering okay they point you right back to NBC learn but there are some other things in here that I wanted you to be aware of in the edutopia site that points you to different um, different activities. Here's the Winter Olympics math from Scholastic. That's one we covered earlier. But I wanted you to be aware of it that there are other things here to point at and look at. Okay. All right. Next. Okay. This website perhaps doesn't look great, but it's full of lots of information. This is cybraryman.com. Okay. And as I scroll through here, many of these sites that we're looking at today were found here, or there are many others. Here's many uh, My Countries of the World page, and here's basic words in Russian. You could bring in some language again there. Okay, here's the dog sled inspired by Sochi Russia Winter Olympics. There's all kinds of information here, but all these are links. And this guy, I love how he focuses on just getting lots of quality links to teachers but doesn't you know, necessarily make the page look great. But when I, when I click on this, I go out to Winter Olympic posters. I go over here to this side, and I can see the Olympic flag. 
Okay, so I wanted to make you aware that this site is just already a big list created for you, and that's cybraryman.com. Okay, and we'll make sure again that you have access to that. Mickey, anything else you have to add as we continue? I'm going to throw in. I'm going to throw in now uh, a uh, a poll. Okay, so I'm going to bring that in, and I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen right at now at this point. Okay, now here I've got a poll for you. Okay, so if you're out there listening, I'm going to open this poll, and what's the Olympic Twitter handle? If you would go ahead and click on that and submit your vote at Olympics, at Sochi Russia, or Sochi 2014 Russia, at I Love the Olympics, or at Justin Bieber. Let's see how people are voting. I am quite shocked that no one has yet selected Justin Bieber. Well, I haven't broadcast the results yet. Okay. All right. Here, here's the results. You should be able to see them. And then, oh, someone did. <laughs> someone did, yeah. Thank you. The correct, the correct answer is at Olympics. And then you don't. Again, I wanted to emphasize that. Have to be a Twitter user to take part in that. Let's have another quiz here. Okay. This might be a little more difficult. Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm going to open this poll here. All right. Which is a new sport event for Sochi 2014? Is it snowball throwing, where they throw snow for accuracy as well as distance? Ice sculpting, primitive tools, and, and they also use local ice, which helps that ice economy. Mountain climbing, where they climb for speed, both individual and team. And team figure skating, where teams of six skaters, male, female, pair, and an ice dance couple. Okay. I don't think anybody is, is biting on your suggestions there. Uh -huh. Yeah, I figured as much. You're right. If you picked team figure skating, that is one of the 12 new events. Good job. We have a high ability learning crowd here. All right. What's the motto? I don't know. Okay, is it slower, smarter bananas? Outwit, outplay, outlast, or faster, higher, stronger? And the votes are coming in. Boy, everybody is right on today. All right, that's our little check for understanding. You all have done very well, by the way, in the check for understanding piece of this. All right, good job. Okay, any closing? Um, uh, now, the, as far as the, uh, the link goes, um, I can get in there, and I'm going to adjust. If it's asking for permission to access, um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to just adjust that. And if it's not working, we'll figure that out. But just in case, um, I want to make sure that you have my email at c.issue8.org. Mickey, do you want me to share yours, or would you rather I didn't? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care. But I think, I think the document's just shared with me. I just think you need to make that link right. public. And right. And any of you who've used Google Docs, that's, you know, we do that once in a while. I think you can relate to that. So I will adjust that. You let me know at c.issue8.org if it's not. And we did record this, um, so you will be able to either share this or point back to it another time. Thanks for coming, Mickey. Anything else? Yeah, I think I think the Olympics just gives you a world of opportunities to bring the, your world into the to bring the world into your classroom. No pun intended. Um, right. and, and you know, it lasts for what two weeks, and it starts on Friday, I believe. So you've got lots of time that you can think about it and, and look at the sites that Corey has found and right. um, possibly develop something. You know, it doesn't have to be all, you know, during the entire two weeks, you know, just come up with a day activity and have your kids um, look at it. But it's something, it's a way that they can't, you know, they're going to be seeing it on the news. They're going to be watching it when they go home. So it's a way to bring that into the classroom and kind of teach them something at the same time. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. There, Otis says it starts tomorrow, right? Opening ceremonies are on Friday. Yep. And if you follow that uh, Twitter stream, twitter.com slash Olympics, um, they, they count it down there as well as all those other sites. I think a, one of the websites had a countdown feature there. But it is beginning. Thanks for attending. And let us know if you have any concerns regarding this topic or others. And we'd be glad to, uh, to get different topics on here for you. We're always open to suggestions. But with it starting tomorrow, we thought we'd just touch base with Olympics. Thanks, Mickey, for helping out today yeah, from the faraway side. Yeah. I appreciate it. It was fun. You bet.
time goes fast. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>